Hi again, it's week two and we're about to launch into our first major essay assignment, the literary letter. Now literary letter is not like a dear so-and-so, how are you? I am fine. Um, it's not like that. It is meant for a larger audience even though it's written to a specific person or group of people. And while it has an agenda that affects or is interesting to that primary audience, it has a larger, meaningful message for a larger, broader audience. Hmm. So the examples you have this week include letters written to you as young writers. Uh, you also have letters written to others um, by fabulous writers, each wanting something specific. Now that's the thing. A literary letter is an argument. An argument wants to engage the audience into discussion around a significant and meaningful point and to persuade that audience, if not to change that audience's mind about an issue, it, then to share ideas and at least establish a rapport with that audience. Now you learned some of this in 1102 probably about the, the rhetorical triangle for argument. It's based in ethos, pathos, and logos. There are some lecture notes for you this week, letters to you from me, so please read them that explain this in greater detail. But as you probably remember, ethos has to do with ethics or the author's credibility. Can you trust the author, right? Is the author uh, responsible, ethical? But also, ethos has to do with relationship with the audience. And it's important to establish rapport with your audience if you were ever to have some sort of dialogue. So think about how these authors establish a relationship with their readers, their primary audience and their secondary audiences. Um, pathos is an appeal to emotion. Now this can be misused as you probably learned regarding logical fallacies, but true pathos appeals to one's heart. That can make you laugh, cry, be called to action, uh, defend the defenseless. Uh, it can be very ennobling. It can be powerful. Think about Martin Luther King. Now you, you don't have to read this. Maybe you read it before. It would make you a better person if you read it again. His letter from Birmingham Jail. If you want to know how a master works with ethos, pathos, and logos, go to the king. He is the king of this stuff. Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. I forgot to mention, path uh, I got to pathos, but I didn't mention logos. Logos is good reasoning. Sounds like logic. Sure, evidence fact-based, but good reasoning, things that people would recognize and, and relate to. So if you were to make a point about an issue, you would want that uh, make a point that is well substantiated, has good evidence, but also that your reasoning through the problem is something a reasonable person could follow and possibly agree with, or at least respond to. So back to Martin Luther King. In his letter to, uh, from Birmingham jail, he is addressing clergymen. He is himself a clergyman. He establishes his rapport with his audience almost instantly in his first two or three paragraphs. So if you want to look at that just to see what he does, he's making a connection to say, hey guys, we are more alike than we are different. We share core values. He also establishes his ethos by saying, hey, you know what? I am so well educated. Let me tell you about Aristotle. He tells you how smart, he, how much he knows and how what he knows might be things that his audience knows. He also appeals with logos. You have said this. I respond to you with my reasoning. Here are my reasons. I'm going to get, lay them out for you. This is why we should not wait. We need to take action now, says he. But his appeal that really turns the tide is his appeal to pathos or emotion. When he mentions that he has a hard time explaining to his daughter why he can't take her to an amusement park because of the color of her skin, your heart breaks and you go, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. But he does more than that. He could have done all of those things, but he is Martin Luther King. So his voice, his diction, his style, his magic with words pull you right through. It is so powerful to read. Now I'm telling you all about this because yeah you should read it but I'm not going to force you to. If you have a chance go for it. 
but I'd like you to read very closely with this kind of analysis in mind. Our letter is from Grizzly Bear Lake to his, a teacher regarding his son and a letter to a would-be terrorist. Hmm, why not? Now these two authors want something from their audiences, but they have to establish a connection. How do they do that? They have to have, offer good reasons. How do they do that? They have to pull in their emotions. How do they do that? Hmm, just analyze these pieces. Before you do that though, read the letters written to you by authors regarding the writing process. We're going to be thinking a lot about these things. Your assignment for this unit is to write a literary uh, letter to a single or, or group audience. That's fine, but it has to have a meaning that extends beyond that limited audience to a broader audience, just as Martin Luther King's letter is something we read even today. All right. Have a great week this week. I look forward to reading your blogs, and have at it. Bye.